Greetings, mortals, and welcome back to the season finale of The Broken Pact, the mythic odysseys of Theros show on twitch.tv slash saving throw show, sponsored by Wizards of the Coast. I am your dungeon master, or should I say, your Therosian chorus thus far for this adventure. And these fine heroes are my players. Please introduce yourself. Hi, everybody. My name is Jordan Pridgen, and I play Astarok, a fighter from the Boros Legion. He's a punchy guy. He makes all the punches, and, uh, well, actually, most of the time he hits people with axes, but uh, we're, we're, like, underwater and stuff now, so, so things will be a bit different. Um, yeah, but he's not in Boros, because he's not in Ravnica right now, so Theros. Done. <laughs> when you're like, he hits people with axes, I almost imagine you being like a cool substitute teacher. Like, normally he hits people with axes, but today he's going to hit you with some hard truths. That's right. <laughs> he's going to hit you with some knowledge about how things, you can call me Mr. A. And he might just seem like a fighting and then guy. then he puts his but foot up on a desk. I can teach you about physics. <laughs> turns, turns his helmet around backwards. Uh, <laughs> Just oh, these words are on my head. <laughs> hey, everybody. I am Riley Silverman, and in this show, I play Theros resident, Theros resident, uh, Safia, who is a cleric of Thassa. Uh, she is a Nyx born, and I used the legacy rule, the lineage rules from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything to kind of make a Nyx born Triton esque character. And uh, she's a little bit upset tonight because they got her son. She's going a little bit. Uh, She's going a little bit Liam Neeson-y on this situation. She, uh, so she's going. Well, we'll see how this goes because you, you don't, you don't take my babies. Take my babies. Mm-hmm. Some bad things happen to you. Take my babies. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, I am Danielle. I am playing Lydia. Uh, Lydia is a uh, human rogue. Lydia is also a worshiper of Thassa, but uh, you know, uh, a worshiper in the way that um, you know how some people say your body is a wonderland. That is maybe a little closer uh, to how Lydia feels, uh, which is not super appropriate, but she's working on it. Your body of water is a wonderland. <laughs> there it is. Wow. Okay. A warship her. Hey, everyone. I'm Ashlyn, and I play a Celestian cleric. Uh, who is also from Ravnica, but has found her way over here on Theros. She is a happy-go-lucky, uh, curious of all the things in the world, a little bit too optimistic at times, possibly, and her name is uh, Tuturu. Tuturu! And, uh, yeah, oh, she's here. Mm-hmm. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, I am I am so excited to uh, be able to play Dungeons and Dragons with you all once again. If those of you who are joining us for the first time for the Broken Pack, welcome. Uh, There is a huge backlog of episodes of not just the Broken Pact when we were in Ravnica and when we were in Avernus, but there's plenty of other great stuff on the Saving Throw Show uh, uh, network that we would love for you to check out. Um, And uh, we also have a a couple of sponsors uh, that I'd like to thank, or we would like to thank, starting first with Hero Forge. So, Hero Forge, minis full, minis with full color options and loads of customization from combat wheelchairs to banners of war. Make your favorite characters using their hero creator system. Check out heroforge.com for more info or enter chat command exclamation point Hero Forge. And we also have uh, another wonderful sponsor with us who is here all season, Die Hard Dice. Check out our friends at Die Hard Dice, where you can save 10% by using the code NATURAL20 at checkout. Use command exclamation point DH DICE in chat for links and info. The code only works until the end of this month, so get on it now. Month's almost over. And you can order our friend CB's dice set and get your 10% off. So you're like double helping friends, double dipping. We like that. Nice. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. End of the month is Friday, so just a little bit more time to help the Critical Bard and us and Die Hard Dice and all of that good stuff. Um, and hey, those of you that are uh, watching or listening to us not live, either watching on YouTube or listening to us as a podcast, thank you so much. Uh, please do us a, lo- a solid and leave us a like, comment, subscribe, the whole nine yards. It really does help the show and the channel as a whole. And you should join our Patreon here at Saving Throw Show. 
uh, to be a part of the new Exploration Society. You have until this Friday, the end of the month, April 30th, to join up at any level and receive an exclusive Founders pin along mm. with some other goodies. Mm. Your support will uh, uh, comes. Uh, your support comes with many rewards like other pins, other special pins, swag, merch discounts, one-page adventures written by our crew, and a whole lot more. So be a part of the society and join up today. And additionally, Twitch subs at either tier two or three that are active through May first will also receive a Founders pin, which is excellent. Ooh. And uh, yeah, so um, before we get in, I figure because we're going to have a real combaty, crunchy beginning to the show, let's start off with some toasts. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey. Also, even, while, even, while you're rubbing your toast up, I forgot to mention this while we were talking about Hero Forge, but because you can see the videos of me and I think Eric from the channel making video forge, uh, making Hero Forge minis, I actually got my Safia mini that arrived oh, this week. Woo. So Very just cool. in time for the finale, I wish I could put her on a map to do for battle combat, but instead she'll have to just live on my computer. But check out this. I even used the, uh, there's a new feature on Hero Forge where you get transparent plastic so you can kind of tell that her staff looks like a little bit of like crystal which is a really cool fun nice. thing that i added there so oh. yeah check that out so there we go Sorry. i would have i would have spent upwards of a hundred dollars at the pet store on fish tank aquarium accessories for this <laughs> combat um but alas we are stuck inside for uh, uh, at least a little bit while longer but uh, we do get to still play with each other over the internet. And I want to thank you all for playing with me. And I also want to thank, with wherewithal, the return of the Broken Pact this season was a wild ride, or should I say, an epic voyage. I just want to thank everyone from Ruben's excellent GMing to all the players with amazing characters, both old and new. Thank you for the adventure. Thank you, with wherewithal. Oh, Much thank, you. thank you. Thank you. And Vampire 54, it's the final showdown. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Asterox, swing away now. Oh, I, sh I need to keep singing. It's the final showdown. Do, 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 do. Asterox, swing away now. So, 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 I don't know how to sing this one. Asterox, <laughs> swing away now. <laughs> Safi brings the thunder. Lydia hides and sneak attacks. And finally, that one I can sing. Thank you, Vampire 54. Thank you, Vampire 54. Oh, and as a reminder, of course, you can send us toasts and do all that great stuff. And please sub to the channel and do all those things that that help us make make the show. And as this is the last episode of the season, I'm going to do my extended thank yous because I only have you know a little bit more time. This season, we had two special guests, Gabe Hicks and Gil Ramirez, who were wonderful uh, as Karanos and Perforos, as well as PCs who were devout of those gods. And we had a mystery guest sponsor this season. I say mystery guest sponsor because they didn't want to be credited, but I want to credit them in some way. So thank you. I also want to thank my writing partner, Phil DeLuca, who has been just a, a very supportive friend and also excellent writing partner, and without whom, I, as usual, I would be totally lost. Um, and I want to thank uh, Wizards of the Coast and Dungeons and Dragons for sponsoring this show and for, you know, giving little old me the opportunity to run sort of, you know, a Magic the Gathering flagship D&D show, which is very exciting for me. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I have to say. And with that, let's dive back into the Broken Pact, Theros.
Episode 10, Fated Return. We begin as we sometimes do, on a crab, on the deck of a ship. It's bobbing up and down on the crystal clear ocean, looking out at the setting sun, getting its back scratched by an old friend. A thousand feet below, the scene is significantly less serene. Safia's son, Odexes, is safe, for now, inside of a giant clam redoubt in the throne room of the city of Calchas. But the rest of the city lies in watery ruin, laid waste by the forces of Erebos, the god of the dead, including the former king, and Safia's ex, and Odexes's father, Palamon. Who the party who of Astro- Who's touching my crap? <laughs> You're not there. <laughs> the party of Astaroth, Tuturu, Lydia, and Sephia are in the throne room, facing down a terrifying familiar foe. Captain Phineas Polyphemus, a Cyclops pirate, once a follower of Crufix, now an undead returned in a golden mask and the insignia of Erebos, the god of the dead, sewn into his jauntily and ironically worn eye patch. To his flanks, the three returned sea hag sisters, Adrienne, Carmilla, and Melanie, whose motivations for allying or perhaps using Captain Finn are murky. But those golden masks are equally foreboding. And there is, of course, a cadre of sentries that stand at the ready of their new captain. When last we joined our heroes, Sophia had stepped forward to draw Finn's attention away from her son, and now all eyes are on her, and a fight is about to begin. And that is where we will pick up our action. Everyone roll for initiative. And as all we right. Do that, right. As we do that, I will remind uh, that we are underwater. Um, typically, it's dark this far down, but there are lanterns in the throne room here. Um, if you do not have a swim speed, which I think you all do, uh, or characters without a swim speed, their speed is halved. Certain weapons can't really be used as efficiently, meaning at disadvantage, and ranged attacks are significantly changed. And also, of course, because you're underwater, fire damage is halved. Um, so let's go in and get uh, some initiatives. Let's start with Tuturu. What did you get? I got a two. Oh, Tuturu. Boy. <laughs> two to two. Lydia. I rolled a 19. 19? Mm hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Asterok. I got a 24. Ow. Natural 20, baby. Nice. <laughs> Uh, Sophia, really I see you also rolled a 19. Yep. Uh, Lydia, I believe, has a higher oh, dexterity. Lydia, yeah, Lydia destroys me oh. dexterity. So. <clears throat> and I have given... Uh, so there are two guards who are there with you helping. Um, and uh, one of them I have uh, given the keys to Ashlyn, and one of them I've given the keys to Jordan. So if you could roll their initiatives, that would be great. Right. Uh and uh, Odexes, who is currently hiding in the giant clamshell panic room, um, I have given the keys to that one to Riley. Um, so, Riley, if you wouldn't mind uh, rolling for Odexes sure. while I roll for all the NPCs. First, Captain Finn, who gets a 19 plus something on his initiative. My guy got an 11. Okay. Uh, come here. Uh, Mine got a finicky. Ooh, what is my plus? Is it your dex bonus, right? Uh, I got a 20. Nice. R Ruben, what's my guy's name? That's hey, it's, you have the keys. You tell me. Um, oh, he did not roll well. All right, it's going to be Nathaniel. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> wow, my the rest of my NPCs did not roll as good. So, oh, looks like, and I'm going to also roll an initiative here. 
don't don't bother asking who that's for. Um, who's that? Who's that? And for? we'll put those in descending don't order. Don't bother. <clears throat> and, is, is that who touched my crab? Because I will mess somebody up. Again. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's possible. We don't know. Um, I guess I guess it's time, y'all. My we'll start at the top. Yes. Uh, oh my! I have to say my name, my guard's name, right? Yes. So yes. Nathaniel and uh, her name is uh, Cecilia the <laughs> second. <laughs> okay. Right. And Nathaniel is pretty new to guarding. This is his like first real like combat thing, and he's kind of nervous. Just throwing Ooh, that I'm, backstory motivation out there. I am excited to get deeper into uh, Cecilia the second and Nathaniel in this epic confrontation. Jordan, I would call it a trial by fire, but we are deeply underwater. So <laughs> but first, Astarok, you have the initiative. Um, Safia, if you recall, at the end of the most recent episode, stepped forward to draw the attention. And so Safia is about 55 feet in front of you. You're uh, maybe 100 or so feet away from the largest of the villains. So remind me what how my speed go. So I, you were uh, blessed uh, or bestowed um, water walking, essentially, and given water breathing and water uh, um, movement uh, when you visited the island um, of uh, Alestre. And so you and Tutru are not encumbered by moving underwater. And you're also underwater, so you can move in three dimensions. You don't have to stay on the ground. Okay. So your movement is normal. All right. Uh, in that case, well, I guess I can move. Uh, if I use my move and my action, I can move like 60 feet. Yeah. So if your movement speed is 30 and you dash, you can move 60. All right. How did how did you just make that uh, that that like a measure? Little arrow? Arrow come so out. if you go to the upper left hand corner, there's uh -huh. a little menu bar. The fifth option looks like an upside down Q. Uh, that is a ruler that can show you. All right, I'm just going to move as far as I can to try and close the distance between uh, me and the other uh, people. I'm, I'm going to run okay. up basically next to uh, next to Riley up there. Okay. You can act. You can get just in front of if you wish, or you can get right next to. Yeah, I, I think I'll make my way just in front of. Uh, Astrox sees that there's stuffs going down. He's like, "All right, stuffs going down. No more talking." Right. Time and you, you sprint as if not even impeded by water, uh, and charge forward and can take a position uh, in front of Sephia. And as he does it, he let he like uh, comes to the end of his thing, and he he. Or he comes to the end of his dash and he pulls out his uh, javelin that he's got and he kind of does a flip around thing and whoo, ends in like a cool pose with the javelin like behind his back and like hit, held in the hand. Perfect. Yeah, I got the axe, but I can still poke the hell out of you all. And javelins are not disadvantaged underwater, notably. Yes. It's very nice. Next up's going to be Captain Finn. Captain Finn is not particularly happy with this particular incursion into his, now his, domain. And so he is going to have, he has 40 feet of movement. So I think he can get, nope, can't quite, oh no, yes he can, because I clicked a little bit too far in. Uh, he can get up to uh, within 10 feet of Astarok, which is all he needs because he has reach. And uh, so he has multi-attack with his long sword. Both of these attacks are going to be made at disadvantage because he uh, he's underwater swinging a long sword. One of them is a natural 20. The other one is a 25 to hit you. What is, is is that with disadvantage? That's with disadvantage. I rolled a 16 and a 20. All right. And then the other one's going to miss. So, so the 25 uh, will hit. Okay, 25. And that is going to be... Uh, and he's swinging with both hands because he's got this big, giant, great sword. This is going to be... 23 slashing damage... 
and eight necrotic damage. Damn. And your maximum hit points are reduced by eight for the remainder of until you take a long rest. I do not know how to change that on D and D Beyond. That's fine. We'll 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 get there. Just make just keep in mind that uh, if you were to be healed up to full, your full is now eight points lower. Reduced by eight? Oh, actually, I think I can. Is yeah, Jordan, okay? if you click on the number under current, it'll pop up a little menu, and then you can go to override max HP, and you just uh -huh. use the down button to get rid of what's there. All righty, got it. Someone's okay. had a few hero feasts. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. And so this big undead arm, and you you saw when you were combating Captain Finn last time, he had big burly Cyclops arms. These appear to be decayed, and you can see bone and sinew beneath the arm, and you can see bits of rib cage, and part of his jaw is exposed as a lot of his uh, flesh has decayed away. It's now Cecilia the Second's turn. All right. Well, Cecilia will look up and down this decaying creature and uh, kind of look over at the other guards. Is Cecilia one of the ones that walked in with the team? Yes. Yeah, they're so behind you're, us right you, now. Yeah, you're behind you. a bit behind. You're about 70 feet away from the action right now. Okay. Well, Cecilia's going to look at Nathaniel and say... Well, nothing to it. We've got to get to business and save our prince and, well, soon to be king. Well, I guess standing king now. So, uh, yep, let's get to it. And she will charge in as far as she can go. And she charges. Okay. Finn is like, oh, okay. I guess we're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is the movement speed of your Triton? I think it's... 60. I think it's... Oh. Um, is it... What is it? 30 feet. 30. Okay. 30. So you can't quite get all the way up there, but you can get most of the way there. Yeah, and you'll certainly double. be yeah. you'll certainly be uh close enough to the action to to be able to sniff it. Uh it's now Safia's turn. Astarok rushes in front of you, takes a defensive position, and takes a huge swipe right across the chest from a massive greatsword. And Finn is right there. All right, uh, I am going to look at Finn, and just because I like the symmetry of it, I'm just going to kind of like raise my hands up, and I'm going to clap, and then right behind him to, in his radius is going to be a casting of Shatter at level four, so I need him to make a constitution saving throw. All right, what's the range on Shatter? Uh, that one is, it was a 60 foot range to cast. The effect is a 10 foot sphere. 10 foot sphere. Let me see if you can get more than one. You can get one of the other bad uh, yeah, uh, centuries. It. Cool. Yeah, okay. So if I will make a or, save. Actually, if I do it here, I can get two of the centuries. Yes, you can. So I'll do it right Absolutely. there. Because why not? So they Perfect. all need to make a con save. All right. The first, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it in uh, what I think is more uh, pageantry. I'm gonna roll for the centuries first. Uh, one of them rolls a three, and this is a con save. Yep. Twelve. Nope. Okay. And then Captain Finn. That is almost certainly gonna be a fail, but I'm sure he has a high con. And that's also a twelve. Yep, those all fail. So that is a f uh, that is a five d eight damage, and I'm going to go ahead and use my channel divinity to do max damage because it's max thunder damage. Um, okay. And so I think five times eight is forty, right? So five times eight is indeed forty. So, so they all take forty thunder damage. Love it. You and the way it cast... works because it's, it's underwater. So I like to imagine that like the water kind of like pushes outward, like there's almost like air for a second and then compresses back down in this like thunderous eruption that pushes back and that compression is what, then that concussion is what knocks back out and hits all of them. It's like when you Perfect. see depth charges go off in exactly. right. movies. I'm picturing yeah. this, I think that it was in the Batman and Robin movie where a depth charge okay, like underwater mine goes off and it sort of looks like that as uh Two of the returned centuries are just immediately turned into 
underwater flotsam. Um, and Captain Finn also takes just a just a gosh darn million damage as well. All right. And then I'm going to use... Oh, I can't do that. Never mind. Um, I don't have a bonus action that I can use. Uh, but I, I, I can move... 60 feet because i have that that staff it's gonna mm -hmm. be 60 feet of swimming speed so i am going to go uh let's see here go over this way okay i'm gonna I'm, I'm trying to move towards where my kid is without being in the range of finn attacking me so if okay. i go 30 feet here um and then i go another can i go 30 feet that way without provoking attack opportunity yes i can okay yeah so i can get this far without being in range of their attacks um so you i'm sure going to here and then i'm going to use a free action to speak and i'm going to shout to my compatriots remember the ship the witches are more powerful as long as three of them are still alive and that'll be my turn excellent well done good turn lydia okay um so i am all the way i'm about uh uh hmm. i think what i'm gonna do is because i have 60 feet of swimming speed mm -hmm. um so i am going to swim to hide because i'm not engaged yet right so i can hide Correct. at this point so i'm gonna swim to hide behind um there's a, a bunch of like these different stone structures yeah uh, so this throne room while it does not have a roof it is kind mm -hmm. of uh i mean it has a roof but it is open it, it, it's, it's a it's a high roof i would say and there are columns that reach up and you can hide behind one of those columns great so i'm gonna hide behind this column that's about it looks like 55 feet from me fabulous so i'm gonna go hide there all right Okay. Uh, go ahead and make a stealth check for me. Okay. If, are you using an action to hide or a bonus action to hide? Um, I'm using, oh, that's a good question. Um, I'm using an action to hide. Okay. Go ahead and roll stealth for me. Okay. And that is a 27. Yeah, you are. You think you're pretty well hidden. Okay. Nice. Okay. Um, and then I can do a bonus with this, right? Well, because you, I think that you can use a bonus action to hide, which means you have a full action left. I have a full action left. Okay, how close am I to? Um, hmm. Sorry, I'm trying to see exactly where these. Um, where the villains are. Where the villains are. Um, sure. I'm gonna see. So Finn is about fifty feet from you. Right. Um, there is uh, behind two pillars at this point, the closest of the centuries is about 40 feet away and then much further away, anywhere between 100 and 125 feet are the, the, the witches. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and see if I can. There's another pillar that's about ooh, 25 feet. And I'm going to see. Can I also can I use an action to hide there? I would say that with your 27, you can just keep your, you can keep your stealth. You, you would be hidden, uh, sneaking between the pillars to hide okay. there. So then, yeah, I'm going to go hide there so that I'm a little okay. closer to them in my next action. Sounds good. And, and so you used, uh, essentially you used the dot, the dash action yes. to get up there and then using your, uh, bonus action to hide. Yes. Excellent. Sounds good. And you think you're pretty darn well hidden. Okay. Um, if you like, you could actually be on top of one of these pillars if you wanted to be. Uh, these pillars are probably 20 feet up. Uh, and I would keep my stealth if I did that? I would say that you keep, can keep your stealth. And I'm going to do that. Yep. Excellent. You have a pretty good vantage point. Um, the, the witches are also about 20 feet up on the, it's sort of like a bowl-shaped throne room. Um, mm -hmm. And the witches are kind of up on the edges of this bowl. Perfect. Then, yeah, I'll do that. Uh, it's now Nathaniel's go. Uh, so, okay, right. I'm Nathaniel. <laughs> <laughs> so Nathaniel goes, okay, all right, Nathaniel, come on. You trained for this. <gasps> Let's go. And he is just going to start uh, swimming as fast as he can to go close the gap between him and the others. So he will move up uh, to be, yep, right about there. To be next to, next to, uh, 
uh cecilia as well next to cecilia the second right yep cecilia the yes, second the second both yeah. of you so both of the guards swimming right at the big bad uh in tandem time to time to save the, the king love it we've been waiting for backup to show up but i guess at this point we can't look like cowards <laughs> Um, it is now going to be the returned sentries, those that remains turn. Uh, and it looks like the closest person to all of them is, um, is Sophia. So all of them are going to close the distance in on Sophia and surround her. Uh, the first one that gets there is not going to get pack tactics, uh, because they're the first one to arrive. Um, and they have spears, so they actually don't have disadvantage. Uh, so the first one rolls a 15 to hit you. That just hits. Yep, that hits. Okay. Second one rolling an advantage higher than that. Third one also higher than that. Fourth one also. So all four are going to hit you with a spear. Okay. Uh, and these hit four. These are these dice. A total of 22 piercing Jesus. and 16 poison. Jesus. As the spears jab into you and they surround you and the gold masks glower down in your direction. Okay, I need the first one that hit me to make a, a, a saving throw for dexterity. Fails. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and just do a little bit of lightning damage on that one. Um, okay. And so that's going to be with my other D8. Where is where's my other D8? What the heck? Oh, there it is. Okay, that is going to be seven lightning damage on that one. All right. And it, a little bit, so, and the, the, yeah. the well, uh, no, it pushes back from me. Excellent. Oh, does it push it? Uh, yeah, actually, I can make it push it because I have a, a f class feature that allows me, if I make lightning damage, I can push something 10 feet away from me. Okay. Would you like for it to be I'm, pushed? I'm at, like a, yeah, why not? All right. <laughs> seems a little, seems seems worth it. Seems worth it to have one less Fair person put within right. range of me. Pushes away and uh, back towards your allies, uh, back towards the middle of the room. That's their turn. Odexes is inside of the clamshell presently. Would he like to do anything else? Um, is is he able to come out or is he stuck in the like, is it like a thing he can push it open or is he? I would say that he has the ability to open the clamshell and come out or peek out. Um, and it would not require uh, any any action. It would just be a free action to be able to manipulate the clamshell. Okay. Um, I think he's just going to peek out for this round. Uh, I think having seen how much damage those four guys just did to his mother, who he knows is very, very powerful, I think he is going to be like, um, I'm not ready for that. I don't have the strength of this fight yet. I'm going to hold off for now. Sounds good. <laughs> he's just going to like right. peek up. He's gonna, I, think, I think he opens it right as if he just gets hit a bunch by spears. And then like he, she, he sees her blow one of them away from her. And he's like, she's got this. And then kind of goes back down underneath. He's he's a little princey boy. He's like he's a little little Lord uh, Fish Leroy. So right, he's not <laughs> he's not the strongest. Yeah, this is not the, combat is not his forte. Present. No, he's really good at politics. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm an absentee mom, so I don't know. No, oh, fair enough. It is now going to be the uh, Sea Hags' turns. They began uh, this combat separated, um, but they are going to swim together um one of them is going to have to dash but they are going to get within 30 feet of each other to be able to use their spell slots uh and they are going to begin making hand motions as they um coalesce together and a small whirlpool of black inky energy uh swirls between them in a, in a sphere and shoots a sickly looking ray out at Safia. Safia, I need a uh, wisdom saving throw. Oh, okay. Ooh. 
as they are going to cast Eye Bite at you. That is a 15. 15. What is my spell save DC? Sorry, I don't see. Oh, my save. You save. Okay. Woo. So you are not. Um, good, this would be a real short fight for me if I didn't. Yeah. You are not sickened. You feel as though the eye bite is trying to uh, turn your stomach sour and turn your bile against you and attempting to make you wretch and lose uh, your your focus. But you're able to shrug off the attempt. And Tuturu. Tuturu is going to move, I want to say, 30 feet at least towards um, Sophia. Let's see okay. how far that's going to be. Where am I? Oh, I'm so far back. Yeah, move yeah. me 30 feet. Um, okay. I'm still so far. Um, she's going to try to move 60 feet, actually. Yeah, she's going to try to move much closer for you now. Can get, you can get basically just in front of the two guards as well. Yeah. Uh, and that is going to put you within within 55 feet of where Sephia is now. Okay, but that's all I can do this turn. So, okay. right? Yep. Because I can just double move. Okay. Huge room. Yeah. So. <laughs> Hang on, Sophia, please. Top of the round, Astarok. Uh, all right, Astarok's going to look at Sophia uh, fighting with all those people and be like, Ooh, you might have jumped the gun a little bit there, Captain. <laughs> Uh, and then he's going to turn towards the guy and be like, all right, I mean, I guess it's going to be you and me. And he's going to grab his javelin and just close the gap and try and grab him and just jam the javelin into him a couple times. Okay. Roll and attacks. All righty. Um, first attack is real high. Uh, 26. It's 26. Wonderful. Uh, that's going to do 1d6 plus 5 damage. Ah! That is 10 damage in the first one. Okay. And then I'll take one more. And that is 20, dirty 20. That hits. Uh, that's 10 damage again. Okay. And then, you know, because we're at it and he just, like, whacked me pretty hard, uh, I'm going to action surge... Excellent. And uh, do it again. Let's do it another time. Uh, that is only a 12. Does not hit. Did not think so. And that time is a 21. So hit. hit. So that is going to be uh, seven damage that time. Okay. Uh, yeah, so Astaroth just like, huh, 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 huh. One of them kind of glances off, but he's like, all right, I feel good having a javelin in my hand again. And you see the blows dealing damage, but the eye of the cycl the undead Cyclops just remains trained on you as it slowly lifts its sword back up for another attempt. Well, uh, this might hurt. Um, I will also add that uh actually you know what never mind so um it is now going to be captain finn's turn a couple things happen on captain finn's turn first of all i need a wisdom saving throw from astarok as right. a deathly aura is surrounding uh surrounding captain finn that is a 10 okay you uh, have disadvantage on saving throws, and your speed is halved until the start of your next turn. Yikes. Um, but you didn't move, so I don't know if that really matters to you. Um, and it is going to make three total attacks against you. Now, now that, you're attacks. Within, now that you're within touching distance, it's going to take its one hand away and only swing its longsword with one hand, and it's also going to attempt to touch you with a dark, deathly uh, grasp. First, the longsword attacks, which are both at disadvantage. That's a two on the dice. And that is a 
15? 15 ain't gonna do it. Okay, and now it's going to try to strength drain you. That's a high number. Uh, 20. Uh, that's not gonna do it. Really? Yeah, my oh, no. AC is 21 with my new yeah. uh, no. magic armor thing. Oh, oh, so upsetting. So you feel as though this energy is just antimatter, is about to just terrible necrotic uh, source coming from his massive giant hand. And after I and, just go, oh, and kind of steps to the And side. you're able to step out of the way of it. Yes. Very good. Uh, that's unfortunate. Um, Lydia, I will let you know that Finn appears to know as if you're there. Finn, Ugh. like, alters his sight. Not, not, doesn't even look at you. He just sort of tilts his head a little bit as if he doesn't even need his eyes to see. Cool. Nathaniel, you have a big old beastie boy in front of you. Um, and there's a, another combat happening behind. There's a bunch of witches gathering behind the clamshell. It's a lot. Nathaniel is, is uh, Jordan. Oh, right. I keep forgetting that Nathaniel is me. Sorry. <laughs> Is it uh, trying to stay in turn genre. I'm trying. It's Nathaniel's turn already. Yeah, Shit. Nathaniel rolled high on uh, initiative. How, what did Nathaniel? Oh, so sorry, not Nathaniel. It's I had, Cecilia I had the, the second. It's Cecilia the second's turn, not Nathaniel Nathaniel's turn. My my fault. It is Cecilia the second's turn. That's right. Nathaniel's still <laughs> still a little bit new here. He's uh shaking in his boots a little, we could say. But... <laughs> you just didn't know we were going until you started moving, you know? <laughs> well, it's okay, it's okay. We've we've got this, don't worry. Uh our uh the little our uh, miss up there looks like she's in a bit of trouble. I think this one, this minotaur over here looks like he's got this handled, so I think we better go help her. So I'm going to head that way and okay. try to help her. Let me see. You can. Hmm. I'm trying to see if there's a way for you to get there without getting an attack of opportunity. Ooh, and I don't actually, think there is. Let's see. Let's see. Actually. Um, so that's what Cecilia the second takes a moment and kind of just like ponders to herself and she thinks, uh, da, 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 da. and then she's like, got it. And she, she, uh, uh, casting, it's one action. That's cool. Um, yeah. And so she, she actually stamps her Triton down because I'm assuming that's what she has. And then she pulls a conch out um, from her pocket side saddle thingy and she blows into it and when she does that um she casts fog cloud Ooh, okay that's and cool she's, she's going to cast it over um where how big of a radius is this again so it it creates a fog cloud that is uh range area it's 120 feet uh 20 foot uh circular Sphere. Okay. And where would you like it? I would like to drop that probably around where the hags are. Mm, okay. Good call. And, huh? That's a good call. Yeah. Okay. Let me drop that in there. And so there is a fog cloud and it's a 20 foot radius. Yes. Yes. And so you're able to, um, uh, drop that directly in the middle of where the hags are, making their vision a little bit murky and muddying the water around them. And they can't, they don't have as good of a time seeing right now. Sure. Um, and so basically it lasts for about an hour and it's going to spread around corners and it's an area that is heavily obscured. Obscured. Um, obscured. Obscured. It's obscured. <laughs> trying to put um, it in a plan. I assume you want it to be in such a way that they are currently in it, but also sort of most of the fog is uh, between you and them. Ah, uh, no, I want it between them. I don't want them seeing each other so they can't get together and cast their spells. Ah, okay. So yeah. they they are they are in the fog cloud now. Yeah. I, I just Perfect. don't want them doing things. Excellent. And then she's going to use her movement to get closer. 
around this giant behemoth thing. Okay. To Sephia? Yep. Okay. Uh, without getting an attack of opportunity, it's She'll probably... take the attack. Okay. Uh, if you're going to take the attack, then let's see. You can move, what was it, 30 feet or 60 feet? Mm, 30. I mean, 30. I feel like... Yeah. Or can uh, she double move? I don't think she can, right? Uh, not now that she's cast Fog Cloud, no. Right. So we'll put her here. Um, and I am going to take an attack of opportunity. If you if you want to, well, you don't actually need to end in yeah. Since in, she's not in opportunity to, get to them in the same attack. She might as well right. just land somewhere yeah. without. So yeah, you're you're through. actually at the bottom of the pillar that Lydia is on top of. Great. Um, and you don't even know that she's there, but you're you're moving <laughs> around the outside. Great. Around the outside. Around the outside. Around the outside. <laughs> Sophia, boy, this here's a bucket of syrup, isn't it? She looks at the the returned or whatever they are all around her, and she goes, "Y'all might want to move, just as a thought." And then she puts her hands up and throws them down, and suddenly, uh, all around her in a uh, fifteen foot radius, these murky black tentacles come rising up out of seemingly nowhere and like like this ethereal presence around her as she casts spirit guardians and so now any of those creatures who start within a 15 foot radius of her are going to take damage starting on their next sets of turns Ooh, that's nasty yeah i don't like that's that. not a spiritual weapon no you don't need to put no i'm gonna it's a radius this is a radius power spell Yes, um, I, I'm trying to. So is it centered on you, or is it centered from a point you control? Centered on me, Spear right? Curve. So I all I'm doing is, uh, well, okay. So it'll it'll just stay on you permanently, as long as it, wherever I move to, yeah. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Uh, a, so yeah, it's, you it's, got it's all self, four of them in the range. Self spell, yeah. Perfect. So at the start of their turns, they'll mm -hmm. take the damage. They all make a saving throw every every single one of them on the start of their turn. Sounds good. Yep. And so with you see. Throw. You see these ethereal black tentacles surrounding Sephia as, you know, they sort of move in unison with her, uh, with her arm movements and rise to the occasion to help protect her. Yep. Lydia, Ooh. from your vantage point atop this pillar, you can see uh, quite a bit of action as including a cloud of fog, a cloud of tentacles, a intense combat between a minotaur fighter and a cyclops returned uh and and uh there's a lot there's a lot happening there's a lot happening and the cyclops returned knows that i'm there right so nothing sneaky for me the cyclops returned has true sight so it knows you're there but he is also in combat with yep. one yep. of your allies so you can certainly sneak attack him absolutely hey. all right well then advantage as well Okay, uh, so right. that is what I'm going to do. I am going to sneak attack, and I don't have advantage on this. Right. Right? It is not, okay. it is not surprise, so you don't have an uh, advantage on the attack, but uh, you you are going... If you hit, you would get your sneak attack damage. Okay. Uh, that is... Actually, let me just do it in here, because I don't know what I'm doing here. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know what that one is. Hey, we're all good. I'm being honest. Um, where's my roll? Where's my rolls? Sorry, I'm having a. Where's my roll twenty on here? I can't seem to find it right now for some reason. Oh, there it is. I am a dummy. Nope, I do have to roll it on here. Okay. All right, that and so that well, the original one was a four. So that's mm. not right. Yeah, four. Even with all of your bonuses, almost yeah. certainly not going to hit. Uh, yeah. As you shoot, shoot uh, a. Like, a, are you coming up to the villain or are you staying atop the pillar? I would have to come up to the villain. Okay, so you're using yeah. your your rapier? Yeah, or I would a dagger? Have, I would be with my rapier. Okay. So you come up to uh, up to uh, Captain Finn, and as you enter his aura, you do feel that you may be taking that sort of foreboding energy in yeah. your in his sphere. Uh, you take a stab and you cannot cannot find purchase you do still have quite a bit of movement left if you want to use it and you also have your bonus action okay i'm gonna do um my bonus action and i'm gonna hit uh with my dagger okay just since i'm, I'm already in range and i'm there and you have an ally within five feet 
Um, which, as a swashbuckler, does that give you advantage? Um, not as sure, any, but as I think... any rogue, it does. Okay. And I hit and... a twenty-six. I don't think Perfect. it gives you advantage if you're within five feet. I think oh, no, it but it gives you gives you gives you sneak, uh, attack. sneak attack. Oh, it gives you sneak attack. That's right, not yeah. advantage. Yeah, but no, the, the twenty six is going to be the ability is you can get sneak attack even when you're fighting by yourself because you're swashbuckling with someone. Right. Got it. Yeah. So uh, didn't need advantage. Twenty six hits, and you're going to get that sneak attack dice. Perfect. Ew. Nice. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so my sneak attack. Roll that first. That is going to be 11 damage. Okay. My dagger, I'll roll that now. That is going to be six damage. Ooh, 17 from a 17. little dagger. As you find purchase in a rib and are able to tear away a big amount of meat, falls right off the bone. Yeah. And uh, I mean, he's starting to get torn. He's looking, I mean, he started out looking rough. Like he was looking rough when he was alive, but even and he's actively falling to pieces as you're laying into him with sharp objects. Uh, Lydia's very excited. Like, look at this! I got a hunk of meat. <laughs> um, do you want to stay where you are? Uh, yeah, I'll stay where I am. All right. Um, Sophia, what's your passive? Passive. Perception. Passive perception is 18. 18. You, you are being harried quite aggressively by four bad guys. Um, but out of the corner of your eye, you could swear you see something swim just into frame over the edge uh, from the northeast uh, and is coming out like in the shadow presently you can't quite make out what it is but it's swimming in your direction okay interesting now it's nathaniel's turn so uh, nathaniel holds his uh mm, urchin spine short sword okay which is i guess what he has and he goes all right okay they're getting him this is your chance Proof you're not a coward. Okay, go to Nathaniel, go. And he's going to swim up to uh, up to Captain Finn. And okay. uh, just try to go... And take two attacks at him. Go right ahead. And I guess these are... Wait, it's not a disadvantage because I have a swim speed, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. If you have a swim speed, nothing you do, I, th I think, is... If, is that true? That's what it said okay. on the thing. Yeah, I mean... So, and especially because you're a Triton, I wouldn't imagine anything you do underwater is yeah. going to have disadvantage. When making so, a melee weapon attack, a creature that doesn't have a swimming speed has disadvantage right. on the attack roll. Correct. Um, so he will come up. So uh, Nathaniel comes up and just takes two attacks at him. Perfect. He can do that. Bring it. Get him, Nathaniel. Save your king. <laughs> <laughs> There you go, Nathaniel. I'm, I'm imagining Great like Pippin and Mary going into the battle at Helm's Deep. <laughs> yeah. 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 With, with like roll, baguettes. Yeah, it's perfect. His first roll is a uh, is a twelve. Not gonna hit. Yeah, I didn't think so. And his second, so he, he swings the first one and kind of. Huh? Oh, okay. Open your eyes. Look. Come on, Nathaniel. And oh, he got a, a twenty-four on that one. That'll hit, yeah. All right. The first, the first one scrapes off of the gross, decayed uh, plate armor that uh, <laughs> Finn is wearing, but the second one you're able to jab between the plates. So he does one d six plus three piercing damage, and then three d six poison damage. Okay. Hmm. Tell uh, me, tell yeah. Make sure to separate those. Yeah. So the the regular damage is nine. It's as much as it can nice. be. Nice. Super nice. And then three d six poison damage. Which is uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So ten okay. poison damage total. So the the uh, urchin spine jabs in, and he's like, "Yeah, I got there!" And all of the <laughs> poison begins to um, undulate underneath the remaining skin, and the poison appears to have no effect on Captain Finn. Fangle doesn't uh, even notice. He's yep. just like, "I hit him! I hit him!" But stabbing sure works, and he yeah. takes that damage. It's now going to be the returns turn. Saving what kind of saves around. do they need? Uh, it's going to be wisdom. 
not super wise. Uh, so let's see here. Wisdom save. Okay. Uh, 16, 19, 14. Does 14 succeed? Uh, the 14 does not. The other two do succeed. The other two will take half of this. Okay. And the other one is a natural one. So two of them fail. Two okay. of them succeed. Okay. So I'll tell you, we can find out who's still standing by I roll this, and then you can decide what damage they do. Because um, this is three. This is a three d eight of radiant damage. Okay, and that is going to be eleven radiant damage on all of them. So they're probably all still standing. But okay, and then uh, half of, half of the ones who saved. Got it. So eleven reduced to five uh, for the ones that succeed. Uh, they are all indeed still standing. One of them does look a little rough as it was pushed back. Um, the one that was pushed back looks the roughest uh, as it took the full the full brunt of uh, of hitting you the first time and got retributive uh, struck. But they are all still around. Shoot. Well, um, here comes a series of grapple on Sophia, y'all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the one that was pushed away is actually going to come over to Lydia. Uh, oh. And take some swings on Lydia. But the first three all have pack tactics, so they are all going to be attacking you at advantage. This is a 17 to hit. Hits. A 23 to hit. Yep. And a 15? The Yep, all three hit. <laughs> okay. Well, it's been fun playing with y'all. Um... <laughs> So Ooh, this you, is going uh, you, to be... You Leroy Jenkins this just a little bit. So, suddenly, <laughs> suddenly, Velma appeared. No, kidding. Uh, right. yeah. So um, I, I'll do the damage individually so that we can cool. make sure that we uh, we get the right death saves. Cool. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, so that's going to be seven piercing and three poison for the... Oh, no. Sorry. Three piercing, seven poison. Okay, for the way. first attack. Okay. Uh, two piercing, nine poison. Okay, Thanks. I am down. Okay, and you'll lose two death saves for the last hit. Oh, wow, okay. Because they're going to hit you. Okay. Uh, does the spiritual thing drop, or does it stay? Yeah, yeah, that'll drop out. Sorry, I was in the middle okay. of taking my death saves, so... Of course, of course. You are at two death saves. Odexes, it's your turn. Odexes may peek out of the shell and see that his uh, his mother may be on death's door. All right. Um, I think that is the moment where he just hi no, he hides again. No, I think he comes out and attacks this one here, uh, the closest one to him. Okay. And so he actually gets a multi-attack, so he gets to attack twice with his rapier, so I'll just roll both of those. And I will say that he is, uh, the, the returned are otherwise preoccupied. Uh, I will give him advantage on these attacks. Okay, so with the first one then, the first roll was uh, with advantage was a 16 to hit. Uh, 16 hits. Okay, and then the damage is going to be... Well, he didn't do very much damage on that, so that's fine. Uh, and then the second one, I'm just going to change it to roll with advantage real quick to make it easier. Uh, okay. And here he goes. Okay, so second one is the highest is an 11. Uh, 11 does not hit. Okay. Fair enough. How, so much, he, damage, yeah, how much damage did it take total? Just three. Okay. He rolled a, he rolled a one. He rolled low, um, crit, like fail damage on his first one. My little soft uh, boy, not good at helping his mom. But coming out, and uh, it looks like he has, uh, in fact, drawn that one's attention, maybe. Okay. Um, away from Safia. Cool. So she can die in peace. That's cool. It's now the witches' turns. The witches are going to go, I can't see anything. No, they're going to, well, let's see if they have, let's make perception checks. I mean, they all roll fairly high. Um, so they, they know that they're all still there. Um, so they can grab each other's arms, kind of. And hmm, what do we want to do? What do we want to do? 
Well, they're all going to leave this fog cloud. I believe. Oh, let's put the fog cloud back. And come out in front. See that Safia is on the ground. And that, that situation appears to be handled. Kind of ignoring the king as well. Uh, and turns their attention to the combatants. And... Um, looking over at the fighters, the closest of which appears to be Lydia. Ooh. Or Cecilia II. Or Cecilia. Well, Cecilia II is over by a far pillar. Um, so technically, Lydia is a little bit closer. Sure. Um, and they have some spells that they can cast. Ooh, that they can. They are going to look at Lydia... And they are going to need Lydia to make... Whoop. Nope, they're actually just going to attack you instead of needing you to make any saves. Oh. Who on the dice? Lydia, you have to so, survive. I have to give you my ship. So you feel uh, they, they combine their powers together and a greenish ray of sickness comes in your direction and it appears uh, to shoot just wide of your head, maybe uh, getting some of your hair in the cross... Uh, in the cross breeze, cross tide, um, in the riptide, as it goes by your hair and uh, has no effect. Oh, that looked gross. Tuturu. Okay, um, remind me when someone goes below death, when someone goes into death saves and you heal them, they go to zero? No. So in in fifth edition, when you when you go to zero and are in death saves, you are just at zero. There is no there's no need to stabilize before healing. Okay, so, so if, I can just heal. You, yeah, correct. you can just pop her back up. Do you heal me? I'm back on my feet. Great. Okay. Right. Well then Tutru is going to go, ah, Sophia. And then she's going, okay, calm down, calm down. You could do this. You do this all the time. This is okay. You did it with the squirrel, with Mookie, and that's how you got your powers. Everything's gonna be okay. Just calm down. Everything's gonna be fine. Just whoo, breathe. Well, don't breathe. You're underwater. Okay. Um, uh, da -da 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 -da. What am I gonna cast? Channel things. Channel things. And she's going to do a fourth level of healing word. Nice. And you are within range. You're about yes. fifty-five feet away right now. Yep, I need 60, so I am golden, go. and so that is an 18, and because I'm a life domain, you get an additional plus, um, I believe it's two plus the spell level, which was four, so I think you get an additional plus six to healing. So how much was that total? Uh, 18 plus six, 24. Nice, thank you. So you are you are, you are conscious. Ooh. Ooh. Um, <laughs> and normally when you're knocked unconscious, you fall prone. But underwater, you were floating there. So I will I will say that you did not have to okay. stand back up. Okay. Uh, when it, it comes back to your turn. Uh, top of the round, Asterok. Things are still. Wait, I mean, this guy. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, sorry, sorry. That's, going that's to a move. bonus action. That, that yeah. was a bonus action. action. Oh, you still geez, have... healing word is crazy. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Tuturu is going to move, so she is not all the way in the back, um, but she's going to try to go around the right of the pillar to get away from the giant thing. To the south or to the north? Which one? To the right, so to, to the, the north. Okay. Mm -hmm. And circle around that way. I mean, is that still... considered an action? No, no, that's just a move. You yeah. still have your action, so you can, yes. you can move a second time if you would like. Um, well, oh, because it's a bonus action? So... Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah your, your bonus action was healing word. So if you want to dash, you can do that. I'm doing that then. Excellent. <laughs> and I'm running gonna... in towards. Uh, yeah. I'm right. situating myself right. I would like to be in uh, this square. Oh, I can't ping it. Can I? How do I ping it? Just hold, hold down the mouse. Uh, can't get quite that far. You can get to about there. No, I'm one below. I can't get there. Oh, you can get you can get here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There. Is that what you'd like to be? Great. Yep. Tutu will go in the middle. She'll put herself between the uh, undead Triton and the undead Finn. Excellent. Now it's the top of the round. Astarok. All right. Astarok is going to be like, you're a pretty tough SOB, aren't you? 
I let's, was pretty uh, tough before, but I am tougher now. <laughs> well, let's hope so, because you weren't all that tough before. <laughs> and um, I'm going to keep on stabbing. Okay. So, okay, first attack on him. Uh, it is 18. To hit? Yeah. 18 is his armor class. Hell yes. Uh, okay, so that will do a 10 piercing damage. Okay. And then I will take a second attack. Thanks. Because that's right. what I do. That's oh, right. And that's a 17, which is a 25, so... Okay, that hits. And that will do uh, 8 damage total. Okay, so here's what happens. Let me make a roll. Yeah. So, you get both stabs in. And he grins at you, and then the second stab, you can see that it gets him, and he has no more energy, and he begins to fade away. But something behind his mask glows, and a, a, a purple flash happens, and he rises back up. Oh, come and on! In, because he has undead fortitude, rises to one hit point instead of zero. He says, I'm tougher now. Oh, gosh. That's your turn? Uh, you, no. You know what? Uh, as a bonus action, I am going to use my second wind. Okay. So, uh, and he goes, I'm tougher now. He goes, I've always been tough. And just, like, shake off the wounds. Uh, which will be... Let me see. There's an action here. I can take it with, I think. No, I'm just going to roll for it. Okay. All right. It is 1d10 plus 8, which I got a 6. So that is 14 damage that I heal. Okay. Pretty solid. I'll take it. Is that your turn? Yep. It's now going to be Captain Finn's turn. The first thing I need is for Lydia... Um which I think that this is Nathaniel and Astarok who all make wisdom saving throws as the gatekeeper's aura uh, begins to grab hold of your psyche. All right. Oof. Astarok got a six. Okay. I got a seven. Okay. How'd Nathaniel do? Uh, I can't see where his... Uh, I guess it's just a wisdom roll. Yeah. Oh, he natural one. Okay. All three of you have disadvantage on saving throws, and your speed is halved until the start of its next turn. Until the start of Captain Finn's next turn. All right. And then it's going to be his turn. So it goes away. And... <laughs> uh, well, it went away at the start of its turn, and now that it's the start of the turn again... It's going to re-up. All right. Uh, and it's just going to wail on Astarok again. Uh, two hits with Longsword, one with Strength Drain. Longsword's a disadvantage, but with a high bonus. That's a, I mean, that is a 23 to hit. Yeah, 23 will hit. And that is less. That is a 16 to hit. 16, I can do it. Okay. So the Longsword is going to hit you for 2d8 plus 5 slashing, which is 11 slashing, and 2d10 necrotic. That's 10 necrotic, and your maximum hit points are reduced by 10 more. Yeesh. So your max hit points are reduced by 18 total, Oof. I think, at this point. And it gets a strength drain attack. Oh, gosh. So now it's going to make, this is just a regular old one roll. Man, I really want to hit with this, but your armor class is so high. I very much don't want to hit, to hit with this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. 18 I like my strength. Doesn't it's hit my you. thing. <laughs> yeah, it would have been, it would have been nice to be able to hit with that. Um, and it tries to reach out, reach out and touch Astarok, and it doesn't work. Boom, boom, um, boom, but boom. it does give you another sword uh, straight to the midsection. Hey, Jordan, uh, how's Astarok looking right now? 
on a uh, on a scale of on a scale of <laughs> uh, one to now sixty six, but used to be eighty four. I'm wow. doing about a forty six. Okay. okay, so he's doing all right. Okay, yeah, he's doing all right. He's tanking pretty good. Uh, yeah. And it's now Cecilia's second's turn. All right. So Cecilia the second uh, takes a look over and sees that her king is now out. And uh, yeah, so she knows how this goes. She must come to the king's aid. That is what her mother did before her and her mother's mother and her mother's mother's mother and her mother's mother's mother twice removed mother did. So she is she too will go to but her, her king's mother. Aid. Total slash. Okay. Yeah, so, we don't talk about her. You could get up next to Tuturu uh, and still have an action, or you can dash to get up to the king. She's going to get up next to Tuturu. Okay. And then she's going to pull out um, her poisoned spine to do a ranged weapon attack. Okay. Against one of the uh, sentries. Yes. The, the, the sentry, sentry next to the king. The sentry next to the king. Excellent. All right, so she's going to line it up. She's like, all right, let's see what we have here. Bit rusty, but that's okay. And she will... And, or I guess, I don't know how poison spine works. Is it she like shooting it like a... Sure. Like a needler in Halo. Yeah, it like shoots a thinking. spine through the water. Um, and it's it's built to be in the water. So it has just a regular roll. All right, let's see. Does a 10 hit? 10 is not going to hit. Uh, the sentries, while they are undead, they do wield shields and wear leather armor. And that's not going to do it, unfortunately. And yeah, so that's her turn. Okay. It's now Sophia's Lydia, turn. Lydia first, because Lydia has higher decks than me. Oh, that's right. Lydia, go ahead. Okay, so I am right by Captain Finn. Is he still engaged with Astarok? He is. Does that mean I get to be sneaky? Sure do. Sure. Uh, so you would get sneak attack damage, but because he sees all thanks to his true sight, uh, you do not have advantage on the roll. But you would get sneak attack damage if you hit. Okay, perfect. All right, so I'm going to go in with Moray Pier. Okay. And that is an 11. 11 does not hit. Okay. Um, and then for my bonus, I'm going to go in with my dagger. See if that gives me more luck. Dagger is a 14. 14 does not hit. Okay. Uh, and then I think that that's it. That's all I got, right? Uh, yeah, unless you yeah. want to try to move away. Um, uh, I which... think, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, well, I'm... if you, if you, because you used your bonus, you, you would uh, get two attacks of opportunity, one from Finn and one from the returns that came up to you. Oh, so fine. It's, it's up to you if you want to, to risk that. No, mm -mm. I'll stay where I'm at. Okay, sounds good. Now it's Safia's turn. Okay, um, Safia is going to look at all of the returned Tritons that are around her, and she's going to go, you're really going to wish that you had killed me or moved when I told you to. And she is going to activate her Dekela Bident of Thassa, and suddenly... Sophia's skin starts to crack and shape and turn into scales. Her back suddenly sprouts a pair of massive wings as Sophia falls down to all fours as she casts True Polymorph on herself to be any creature with a innate swimming speed, and it has to be at the target's challenge rating or lower, or their level, which is a challenge rating of eight. Yep. So suddenly, Sophia, as you know her, is gone, and in her place is a young bronze dragon oh my god Whoa. amazing so now safia has got 142 hit points tritons what are you gonna do about that oh Ooh. my gosh incredible do they have a swim speed bronze dragon yeah they do 40 bronze feet they're a coastal have a dragon 40 foot swim speed let me tell you some more dragon facts i got a multi-attack bro <laughs> oh my goodness oh well, my gosh in future turns you'll have a multi-attack yeah right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Nice. I don't know if I get a bonus action on this turn at this point. I, um, I probably should have done my bo Actually, you know what? Yeah, strike that. Uh, first thing I'm going to do before I do that move is I'm going to cast 
No, I can't because I can't cast two spells. So I do do that. It is exactly what I do. Okay. Yes. So right. I, don't, I don't know what I'm going to put this little angel marker on her. Uh, I'm gonna. I have. I've just downloaded a uh, young bronze dragon. So go. Oh, I got it ready. I've had it locked in. It was either going to be this or a sperm whale, and a sperm whale would have been fun, but might have been a problem. So, <laughs> sure. um, uh, also, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to let that slide. I should have cast Wrath of the Storm, but because everyone was attacking at three at one, one time, I didn't. It, it all happened too fast, so mm -hmm. I'm going to let that go because these guys are going to have to deal with the fact that they are suddenly engaged with Angling a dragon. with a young bronze dragon. Yeah. I love it. All yeah. right. Let's yeah. let's yeah. Now what size category is a young bronze dragon? Oh, uh, what size category would that be? That would actually be a uh let's see what it says. Uh large, I believe. It's a large. Right, large. Dragon. So instead instead of Safia, you now have Yeah. Uh, I'm going to put your I'm going to put you over there and these have yeah. to be pushed out of the way a little bit as a matter of fact. Can you give you me now, control of that big boy? Yes, I can. Sweet. Um and uh, you see in the place of where Sophia was, and you saw her change, um, you now see a young bronze Sophia. Now, the Bident, uh, when you true polymorph, mm -hmm. all of your items, like, mm -hmm. polymorph with you. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. um, that means that the Bident has polymorph with you? I believe so, yeah. Which I mean, which I believe means that the Biden's abilities go away? Question mark. Yeah, I don't think that I can cast Biden. I don't think I can. I mean, I can. I can drop this spell and stop concentrating if I want to turn back. But um, I don't think. I don't think that I could do other Biden powers. Got while it. I, yeah, okay. like I, don't, I don't think I have my sixty. I mean, that's up to you. I don't think I have my sixty swim speed right now. But I have forty as a dragon, yeah. so I think it's a good trade off. Sure, makes sense to me. So you're now you're a dragon. So, all right. Anything else? Um, I don't think I have anything else. I'm looking for anything that says bonus action as a dragon, but I don't think that dragons get a bonus action. Um, Actually, you know what I'm going to do real quick, because I didn't realize I had access to counterspell. I'm going to try to counterspell you with my hags. I'm going to fail. Okay, <laughs> keep going. I would have been so mad at you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I forgot that I had counterspell. But who was it recently? Uh, it was Justice Amram who said like he cast counterspell once when it was a revivify spell, and so the players went to revivify their 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 comrade, and then he cast counterspell. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. What a what a thing to counterspell. But it was the only time he's ever really. It was the first time he ever used it, and it was anyway. Sorry, continue. It's all right. No no worries. That's a good story. Um. So the the hags like draw their energy together to try to uh, to counter your spell to no effect, and you are able to still turn into a dragon. Um, it's now going to be Nathaniel's turn. Nathaniel's directly in front <laughs> of uh, of Captain Phineas Polyphemus, the undead Cyclops, if he wants to uh, try oh. to take a swing away. Yeah, N Nathaniel is just like, oh, he went down once! Maybe this is my moment. <laughs> and he's going to take a couple swings. Come on, Nathaniel. Okay. I can do it. Uh, his first swing is a 19. Uh, nine, nine, yeah. 24. That hits. That's pretty good. Oh, we, wait, hold on. Are we down? We might, I think, I think unless it's me, I think that our stream just went down. Uh, I can still see yeah, the stream. Okay, yeah. I was on my end. Sorry, I just I want to make sure because of what happened two weeks ago. So sorry. We're good. Continue. So Nathaniel hits. Uh, no need to roll the poison. Okay. Yeah. So it does one d six plus three piercing damage, which is uh, going to be four. So okay. Go, uh, and then so, he'll take a second attack. Well, I need oh. to make a Constitution save with a DC of nine. Okay. I succeed. I actually. I think I exactly succeed, actually, <laughs> nice. now that I look at it. Because my con save... Oh, no, I my con saves are plus eight, so I'm actually fine. But yes, I succeed, so I'm at one still. All right. Uh, so can he not fail these constitution saves? Because that seems uh, pretty impossible. <laughs> if damage reduces the Falaskia to zero hit points, which this is... A, I'm using a modified Falaskia stat block. He, he has a, to make... A D9 save? Uh, it DC must make nine? a con save, constitution saving throw with a DC of five plus the damage taken 
unless the damage is radiant or from a critical hit. Got it. Okay. On a success, so it's like, the Falaskia drops to one. I was like, if it's always nine and he has a plus eight, then we're not winning this battle. No. In this case, because it was exactly that many hit points, it's right. going to be tough. Okay, one more attack. It, that is a, uh, that's a 17. 17 does not hit. Mm. All right. Well, he takes another slash at it, but it, it, it don't do it. As uh, Nathan, he, he's putting in good work. I mean, this this uh, this undead Cyclops has more holes in him than Swiss cheese, but he's staying up and staying fighting. A champion of the God of the Dead uh, would do no worse. It's now going to be these returns turns. Freaking dragon now. <laughs> um, well, two of the sentries are going to stab at the dragon. One of the sentries is going to stab at Odexes. Okay. Um, the one that's stabbing at Odexes does not have pack tactics because it's the only one engaged with it. But the other two have pack tactics at the dragon. That is uh, 18 to hit. For Odexes? Yeah, that's going to do it. No, no, no. For the dragon. Oh, for the dragon, it just hits. Okay. And 18 oh, to hit. Hang on. I better or no, 19 to hit that time. Here. Hang on. Okay, so the dragon has to start with... And then the one that swung at Ode Odexes got a natural one. So <laughs> that's unfortunate for me. Here's what I'm gonna do. Hang on. I'm gonna I'm gonna do one. Give me just one second here. I'm gonna put my what my HP was previously, and then I'm gonna edit my thing here. Give me a new max right now. Um, that way I can just track my magic on my my energy on D and D Beyond, so it's easier. Sounds um, good. Okay. 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 Let me know when you're ready. Hang on. Um, okay, I'm ready. Okay. Uh, 14 piercing and 12 okay. poison. Okay. From the two I... total hits. Okay, I'm not resistant to anything, which is a shame. I think it's because it's a young dragon. Um, I'm immune to something, but that's not going to matter here. So how much was that total again? Uh, 26 is the 26 total. 26 total? Cool. Yes. All right. They're going to regret uh, that. And then the last century got a natural one. So okay, so he missed the Dexies. Cool. Less than ideal. Cool. Um, yes. And so this one will move around, and this one will move around so that they're at least a little bit closer together, I think. But uh, I'll, I'll we'll put them like this. Put you at the corners of the dragon. Okay. Uh, it's now Odexy's turn. Yeah, disengage. Gonna go back to his little shell. And do it again. <laughs> oh, and he also oh, realizes. A dragon. He also realizes that. Well, yeah, his mom's a dragon. He's almost got a swing at him. Also realizes that if he stays out, he's putting the guard in danger because she's gonna be honor bound to protect him. So he's freeing her up to do what she needs to be doing instead of protecting his weak little buddy, little booty. <laughs> so that is that is that is a lot of decisions in one thing for him to do, but I think it makes sense. So okay. yeah, he is a uh, um yeah. Okay. Uh it's now the witches, and the witches see that they have a dragon to tangle with now, and they are going to attempt to cast, um, they're going to attempt to cast Phantasmal Killer. I need a wisdom saving throw from uh, Safia using, okay. using the dragon stats. I think with true polymorph, you, yeah, I think you do gain the creature stats. Um, okay. But it's not so it's not beast form, it's polymorph, so I think it does change. That is a, that's a bit of a shame. Um it's a saving throw, right? You said yes, okay. wisdom that's save. Better. Okay. I'm okay with that. Okay, that is a dirty 20. Woo! Okay. Well, you succeed, so okay, you do good. not take you do not take phantasmal killer effect. Um which uh yeah. It's just a it's just a save or suck spell. So you save. Cool. And so you feel these witches try to grab the inside of your mind and they are unable to do so. And um, they will move uh, uh, into uh, the middle and sort of get right up in the grill of um, Cecilia II 
and Tuturu and sort of have a stare down with the two mm. of you. Cool. And it, speaking of which, it's Tuturu's turn. All right. Uh, Tuturu is going to... Um, uh, Okay, so let me measure some things out here. Tutru is going to eyeball some stuff. She's going to go, hmm, they look about 10 feet. They oh, look yeah. about 10 <laughs> feet. Yep. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, and she's going to uh, put her hand on her chest and uh, feel the warmth of her pendant and imagine the uh, setting sun of Ravnica again. And with that, feel the uh, feel inspired, and she's going to present her pendant as her holy symbol, an attempt to turn undead. Nice. What's the range on turn undead? Thirty feet. Okay. You get all Everybody. of you get everybody. You get literally everybody. all of the bad guys. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Okay, I so I, I like forget players could turn on dead. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now they are returned, so they do have burn resistance, which yes, means they, that they do. have advantage on saving throws against an effect that turns on dead. So we're going to start with the three that you can probably just outright <laughs> destroy if they fail. Yes. So we'll start with the ones that are surrounding Sophia. Wisdom DC sixteen. Uh, wisdom. Ugh. Okay. Well, one of them fails. Another one fails. Nice. Another one fails. <laughs> All three of the ones surrounding Sephia immediately turn to flotsam and Ooh. are blown away in clouds of inky ash in the waves. Um, the sea hags now uh, also are returned, so they also have returned <gasps> resistance. I didn't know they were dead. Yeah, well, we, they're we undead sea hags. <laughs> we killed two of them. You saw that two of them are dead, and then the third yeah. one got hit with a lightning bolt. And you didn't see what happened, but but I did. Um and so uh we saw and what, her was, way out. what was the say what was the number 16. for the save? Sixteen, okay. Melanie fails. Mm -hmm. Uh Adrienne succeeds. And uh Carmilla succeeds. So one of the hags fails. The other two succeed. What happens on a failure? On a failure, they all, um, on a failure, they, uh, well, they did, they're they destroyed usually, but I think that there's a CR thing here that comes into yeah. play. So CR, if they're higher than CR one based on your level, which they are. Um, if they're uh, instantly destroyed, if it's CR is lower than the threshold of my level. Right. The threshold of your level is CR one, which is what destroyed the sentries. Um, oh, but my the level hags, is one. Well, the, the the threshold of your level, as described oh. in the in the rules of the text, Got I checked it. on this last week. Um, so yes, so uh, the sea hags are higher than level one, so they are not destroyed. What is the additional? So they are effect? just turned undead. So yes. that just means they have to get as far away from me as possible on their turns for their actions. Yes, I believe. Ugh, um, let's see. Um, turn undead. I also have good news. Uh, Finn also failed somehow. Wait, Finn? Nice. Oh, Finn's. Yes. Ha <laughs> ha. Also oh. undead. <laughs> he has plus seven to his wisdom saves and had advantage, and I did not reach the reach the number. A turn yeah, creature must it. spend its turn trying to move as far away from you as it can, and it can't willingly move to a space within thirty feet of you. It also can't take reactions. For its action, oh, no. it can use only the dash action or try to escape from an effect that prevents it from moving. If nowhere, if there's nowhere to move, the creature can use the dog action. Wow. Okay. Also, well, I just want to point out that turn undead does also provoke attack of opportunity because it's not a magical form of movement. Yes, so when, when Finn runs away, oh, yeah, we're gonna wreck him. and all the tritons yes. that are next to him get to yeah. just go to town on him. Yeah. So you see Tutu present this holy symbol, and uh, a, a the light of uh, of the voice of the of Selesnia emanates from it, and all of these undead cower in fear at the bright light of life. 
they're, they're so confused by Mont Selesnia's <laughs> um, energy. Be like, what is this? This doesn't feel like it's from here. And we're back to Welcome Asperos. to Pharos. We have gods. Really? <laughs> we have a tutoru. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Hi, I'm tutoru. Wow, that, that was probably the best turn on dead I've ever seen. Nice. nice. You're not welcome here. Please go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Astarok. Uh, still at one hit point. Uh, Astarok is going to uh, aim at that big old mask-covered eye the guy's got. And just be like, all right, this is going on too long. And it's just going to try and jam his spear into it. Take two more attacks on him. Okay. All right. So the first is, ooh, not great. Uh, so that's going to be a 12. Does not hit. All right. Next attack. That one is going to be a 19. 19 hits. Oh, yeah. All right. Still not a ton of damage, but 1d6 plus 5. Uh, so that is going to be 11 damage. Okay. 11. So 16 is my DC. Astarok. Describe for me. Captain Phineas Polyphemus's grisly demise. So Astarok, <laughs> seeing that he's been like distracted by the, uh, the, the turn on dead, goes up to uh, Phineas and is like, all right, this has been taking too long. And he grabs at the mask and pulls it aside and then grabs his, like, uh, Cyclops' mouth inside and pulls himself up and then goes, yeah, you were that tough. <clears throat> and then just jams his javelin through uh, Captain Finn's undead eye. Jeez. And... <clears throat> and then he pushes it off with his foot and lets him uh, fall to the ground. And as much as Captain Finn is a man who enjoys his witty repartee. There is no response. He falls to the ocean floor. Well, Finn's turn would have been next. Now it's Cecilia II, who has three frightened uh, witches in front of her. Two, right? We killed one. Or uh, no, we no, turned you're not the destroyed. You've you've turned one of them. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, yes. So Cecilia looks at them, looks around, sees that her her liege has went back into the shell, the to to protect themselves, and uh, yeah. So she's going to scooch up to one of them and just hack away. Okay. Yeah, none of the hags have taken any damage yet. So lovely. Yep, Cecilia will move up and be like, "This is for my mother's mother." and uh, attack with the uh, Urchin Spine Short Sword. Okay. She has multi-attack. Uh, 16 on the first one. 16 will hit a hag. Woo! Uh, she does 1d6 plus 3. Uh, so 8 damage. Piercing okay. plus uh, 3d6 poison damage. Oof. Oh my. Oof. A lot of that poison damage. Um, that's, uh, six, six plus three, so that's 12, um, plus three, that's 15, plus, uh, oh, there's no plus there, so 15. Wow. Holy 15 crap. points of damage. Jeez. That's a good hit for, uh, for an NPC, as, uh, the, the urchin spine poison, uh, sort of, <laughs> you know, pulses into, uh, one of the, one of the sisters. And that was just the first hit. Oh no, uh, you have multi-attack? She has multi-attack, yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> That's why she's called the second. It's not because she is the second. It's because she has the second attack. Got it, got it. <laughs> uh, and so just uh, plus what? Five? Does 14 hit? Uh, 14 is their armor class. <laughs> All right, so let's do this again. Uh, so eight damage again for just piercing. Uh, okay. And then for poison, this time we've got six plus three, so nine damage. Nine poison damage. Okay. Nine poison wow. damage, but it's all poisson damage. Poisson. <laughs> poisson damage. Cecilia II is coming into her own. Uh, and <laughs> if you're a throne room guard, well, god damn it, guard the throne room. And she is uh, laying into this witch. I, I think she just got promoted to the king's guard. I think That's that might true. be what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> that, is a, that is possibly something that will happen. Um, Lydia... You're up next. 
Uh, Sophia well, gonna, and Lydia are on 19. We agreed to switch this time around. Um, I, I, I saw what I did, and I thought that the dragon might want it. <laughs> hey, Ruben, yeah, I hi. really want to thank you for lining your hags up in a straight yeah. line for uh -huh. me. Sure. Uh, and the dragon's going to be a little bit considerate to Cecilia the second because she is noble and it's a five foot rate. It's a five foot beam. So I'm going to move right here. Ruben, go ahead and just have all those hags of yours that haven't taken any damage yet, except for the mm -hmm. ones that have. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, have them all make a dexterity saving throw for me. Sure, I can do that. Uh, one of them got a four plus whatever. The okay. other one rolled a, this is a dex save, 15. Mm -hmm. Okay, that one saves. And natural 20. Okay, cool. so those two save. The other one did not. And right. I'm going to go ahead and burn that other Wrath of the Storm of mine because uh, I'm doing lightning damage here. With you your dragon? How much, do you want to know how much damage a, light, a dragon normally rolls for lightning breath? I'm going to say 8d6. Nope, it's 10d10. Jeepers! Oh. So, so all the, the, one, the one that failed takes 100. The two yeah. that succeeded take 50. Okay. I'm going to say that that is going to clear them out because I, I'm okay with that happening because that is dope. Yeah, but basically when you said none of the hags taken any damage yet, I grinned in the exact same way that Thanos grins at the end of the Avengers when I... he is told to battle them as to court death. And he turns and grins at the camera. I literally, I was Incredible. sitting here and you're like, the hags haven't taken any damage yet. And I like giggle, I like giggle to myself. I'm like, I can't wait to do this. Yeah, Wrath of the Storm plus Dragon Breath Weapon. <laughs> Boy, howdy, that's a heck of a combo. Um, and they are turned to lightning-based ash and dust. Listen, you give me a god's bident to take into battle. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna milk it for every piece of damage I can. And we are gonna come out of initiative. But something that happens is that the ground beneath Captain Finn and where the sentries and hags used to be begins to undulate a little bit. As if it was the surface of the ocean, but you're under the ocean and it's the ground. And it shakes and it turns into um, smoke and ink. And from within the inky darkness emerge uh, octopus tentacles that writhe, uh, actually squid tentacles that writhe and pull up. And they grab the remains of the... Uh, fallen undead and start to suck them into the earth can and we attack from... them uh sure yeah so asterox sees the thing go hey hey no no i killed that <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and roll an attack whoa what uh, are these things i got a 15 plus 8 so that is a uh, 23 okay uh i will say that you're able to hit but it goes through like mm. a ghost. Ah, nah. And from where that uh, energy, that fog and mist is pulled away, starts to coalesce into a purple-black form of a man in a gold mask wielding a whip at his side. He looks at you all and says, you know you ain't going to succeed. What, what, what do you mean? I, I don't know that. We kind of just did. Yeah, so far things are going pretty well for us. So far things have been fine because you haven't been on my domain. So far things have been fine because I've allowed it to happen. So far... You've just been a thorn in my side, but no longer. You've drawn my ire. And now you will face the full wrath of the God of the Dead. But I'll let you have this victory. I'll let you have this one. Lick your wounds. Build up whatever city this is back to its former disgustingness. And I'll see you soon, because if you need the help and the permission of all of the gods, you're going to need the help and permission of me. And if what you are hoping for 
is to prevent the death of this world, well, it's going to be tough to get my permission. See y'all soon. And Erebos, the god of the dead, will sink back into the earth and disappear. Well, he's full of himself, isn't he? Yeah. I mean, come on. We won this that wasn't fight. Very nice. He didn't let us win anything. We kicked their butts. You kicked yeah. butt. You had so much kicking butt. Sophie is going to transform herself back down into her normal form. Okay. Um, and running towards you from where you saw just over the hill, when you saw that a small shape was running towards you, you see a crab. You see your crab. You see Odie is big. Odie is like German shepherd sized now. St. Bernard sized. Big crab. And following Odie over the hill, you see, slowly clapping, Thassa. What do they see, Danielle? As Thassa comes up with Odie the crab, they do see her clapping with a wry smile on her face. She approaches the group and smiles. Thassa is large. Her hair is right now um, beautiful and shimmering around her as the water moves through it. This is her domain. And she turns to Safiya and she says, young dragon, huh? I didn't want to tear the whole thing down with the whale form, but, and then I pull the staff, the, the Biden off my back and I hold it up to her and I say, and I, and I kneel with, with reverence. And I say, I, I think this belongs to you. It does belong to me. Thank you very much. And Thassa takes it and turns to Lydia, uh, who is shaking uh, and a little bit crying. Hi, hi, hi. Good to see you again. Good to see you. And Thassa says, it is wonderful to see you again, my child. Have you been, what's the word you've been using? Appropriate? <laughs> I've been appropriate. I've been so appropriate. I've been the most appropriate person. Sophia, tell her how appropriate I've been. Oh, gosh, I'm so appropriate. <laughs> she has actually been very, very appropriate. Um, we can vouch super appropriate. Very appropriate. Will Sorry. Odexes will have snuck out of the clamshell as well and is uh, standing at your side, Sephia. Looks Ast like you got yourself a couple of good soldiers here. Hmm, Astarok Tuturu, thank you for helping my followers. I am of many minds about your quest. <sighs> I believe that there are just too many outside forces. I worry about the greater multiverse. I worry about what we will do here. But I have been around a long, long, very long time. I have seen growth and I have seen change. I have watched these men build their little empires and I have watched them all washed away by the shore like sand castles. <sighs> Sophia, Lydia, you are so loyal in the fact that you do belong to me. It does give me pause on how I feel about your little quest and your little adventure. I have thought long and I have thought hard. I grant my permission. I am on your side. Tuturu, yeah. I share your love of natural wonder. And Astarok, I enjoy your chaos. Hey, thanks. You're very good at punching. I try, you know. That was kind of a natural thing, but I have kind of... 
I'll go into it later. I like punching and I like you. And I like that you have been here for my Sophia, most of all. And a a small... That too. (laughs) I'm so good at punching. I really like punching. I'm not as good as Astaroth, but I do like to punch. Yes, dear, I have seen your punching. (laughs) You often say my name when you do it. It is good, but also awkward. A small stone disc with the familiar symbol of Thassa, the three waves, um, appears similar to the ones that you've collected from the other gods that have granted you their permission. Just off to the side, Odexes is addressing uh, Nathaniel and Cecilia II, uh, and uh, you can barely make out a little bit of their conversation, but one thing you can definitely hear is, with wherewithal, giving us a toast. Hey! Hey! It says, this is for Ashlyn for that turn on dead. Damn. <laughs> I hope I did the lots of A's and M's and N's justice. Absolutely. Sophia, my child, there is more that I have come to ask of you. You who are so brave, you who come from a long line of women who have fought and controlled these seas and your ships. Ask, ask anything of me, my goddess. I will do whatever you ask. I have only one thing to ask of you, and I hope that you do accept. I would like you to join me in the God's Realm of Nyx as my oracle? I, I, I don't know what to say. I, would I, would I still get to like go on adventures and travel the seas and stuff like that? While I know that this is one of your callings, once you join with me, The adventure will be with me. The adventure will not be on your ship. But you will get to do new adventures with me on Nyx. You will see for me. You will be part of my eyes. And together we will shape these seas. And we will help those who deserve it. And we will smite those who deserve it more. Sophia looks over at Lydia. And she goes... Hasn't been my ship for a little while now. I am gonna miss you. Um, and then I I take my amulet of Comprehend Languages and I give it to Lydia. And I, I say, you're gonna need this to talk to Odie. Oh, and... Oh, you can't cast spells. Um, I look over at... Tutsuru, and I go, here, you take, and I give Tutsuru the staff of lightning bolts. Oh, 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 okay. I don't think I'm going to need this up there. Um, yeah. I mean, I hope, I don't, I mean, is this okay? Don't give this away? Is it? Is it fine for you? Tasa, I don't want to, like, oh. give away gifts that you gave me, but I felt like they could probably use it more than I could. Take care of your people, as I will take care of you. And... Oh, you know what? Actually, the last thing I'm going to give away, I forgot that I had this. It's one of, it's my favorite item, and I never I think I only used it once. I give this to to Tutor, it's not Tutor, to Lydia, um, because Ashrock doesn't drink. Uh, I give you, Lydia, the amulet of the drunkard, which is my necklace that allows me to once per day I can use like if I drink a pint of beer, ale, or meat, I gain back four D4 plus four <laughs> hit points. So she gives that to you. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Lydia cries as she puts her ambulance on. And then she's like, oh, I guess you can take that. She gives Astaroth her bag of holding. Sure, yeah. Yeah, there, there you go. Nice. You get something. You can carry your, your your letter in that, and then it won't get wet when you go underwater. Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, but don't open it underwater. What? What'll happen? And Astaroth starts to open it. Goes, what? No, oh, wait, no. <laughs> don't open it underwater. Right, okay. <laughs> you just said that. Yep, that was the real thing. good sometimes. And then she she looks at um, at Thassa and she says, 
When do we go? Child, we leave now. Odie will look up and be like, wait, oh, now? What do you mean now? This is, wait, what? What do you mean? What do you mean now? Uh, and only Sophia can understand that, but all of you can understand Odexes, who says, wait, I, can we, I'm not ready to leave this place. Yes, you are. You know why? Why? Because you have to be. We don't choose where the tide takes us, son. We end up where Fassa guides us with her currents, and this is where you've washed up. Do me a favor. Would you check in on your sister once in a while? And that... Yeah. And, and then she, she hugs him and whispers, a, whispers something in his ear that's only for him to hear. And then she walks over to Astarok and Tuturu and says, I, I don't understand about half of what you say, but you showed up and without almost any pushing agreed to help save my world. So oh, lightning buddies forever, right? Yeah. Hey, and hey, I mean, you guys don't have a Boros Legion here, so someone's got to save your butts, right? Yeah. I, again, I don't understand half of what you say. It's just, it's just like you say things and it seems real <laughs> apt, but... And then hey, she looks at Lydia. Welcome to my world, 90% of the time. Yeah, I got that. Yeah. Um, hey, Lydia. It's been... Yeah. Lydia goes to shake her hand. And, and she Sophia, shakes it. Sophia just like gives her just a big hug. And... Oh, I'm and... gonna miss you, Cap. Well, if you ever need me, just flip the ship back into Nyx and then sail to Thassa's realm. Oh. And yeah, it seems harder now that I'm saying it out loud. Okay. Um, just really okay, remember, remember like the feet Odie. Back and stuff? I'm going to miss you so much, but this is where you belong. You're doing it. That's my destiny. This is your destiny. Oh, I'm going to make a statue of you that is so wonderful and beautiful like you and so, so appropriate. You know what? <laughs> you can make it kind of dirty. I don't mind. Oh, good. Oh, oh. Hey, you know what I ask? Actually, if you go talk to Alestra, she'll tell you lots of details to put on it. That'll make it real fun. So, Can I ask a quick question that it seems like nobody else here is asking? Oh, so sure. it might just be that I didn't pick it up. Why is your crab so big now? That is a good question. Odie will look up and be like, I uh, hadn't noticed. He says he hasn't noticed, so. Oh, all right. <laughs> no no need to bring it up then, I guess. I mean, I guess it, it, whenever Thassa comes by and gives me scratches, I get bigger. So I guess <clears throat> that's part of the part of growing up, I guess. And Thassa turns to Odie and says, it's because you're a very good boy. Who's the best boy? And gives one more scratch and goes, oh, oh. <laughs> I, think, I think seeing this happen, Sophia kind of just like out of her natural in impulsive and curiosity reaches over and gives him a scratch to see if it does anything because she's Thassa's oracle now. So she's yeah. like, make a make an animal handling check for me. All right. <laughs> Not a proficiency, but a pretty high stat for me. Um, oh, that's actually a 22. Whoa. Ooh. You see that Thassa's influence, uh, when Thassa is in physical contact with Odie, uh, Odie grows slightly. And uh, when you do the same, um, 
you do, it's not as noticeable, but you can feel a little bit of the shell push against your hand. She just kind of goes, next time. Odie will look at you and say, Where sh- what should I do? Where should what I go? always do. Protect the ship. Protect Lydia. I'm going to miss you. I'll be around. And grab a leg. <laughs> yeah, she gives him a little non-scritchy, just like a little pat mm-hmm. behind his eyes. not his make you bigger, Scritch. <laughs> yeah, like behind where his eyes, where my eye socks would be. Yeah. No. Oh, he doesn't have eye socks. He's not like a crab, but yeah, she kind of gives him a little, little rub down. And that's the turns. Are you ready, my oracle? Yeah, I think I am. And with a wave of Thassa's hand, as she moves closer to Sophia, the water begins to churn around both of them. And then in an instant, they're both gone. And Sophia will enter the battlefield and seeing that the devotion to blue is greater than the number of cards left in the library, win the game. <laughs> Magic <laughs> reference. I had to make one. <laughs> you just had to go there. The three of you remain in the throne room. All right. I Cody guess. stands there as well. I guess I'm like in charge of the ship now. You guys ready to go back to the ship? Aye, aye, Captain. Yeah. Let's do it. Odexes will uh, uh, stop his conversation with Cecilia and Nathaniel, Cecilia the second. And thank you for saving me and for being friends with my mom. Hey. And uh, yeah. You're going to be good here, Kid King? Think you got things handled? I don't know. I mean, it's going to be difficult to I've never led people before I've never been a you know I've been you know the the, the troublesome prince um, but you, you do what you need to do you are your mom's son you got this kid yeah and hey take it from me no matter how bad things start There's always room to turn yourself around. You know, just set your mind to it. Fall in with good people. Yeah, I'm sure you'll be a good king. And, you know, follow follow your heart and the calling of the tides. And when you don't know what to do, Thassa and your mom is only a devotion away. All right. Let's go back to the ship. There's that, a myth. Yeah. Oh, sorry, go ahead. That's it. There is a myth uh, of Thassa that followers tell that every raindrop, every liquid in rivers and streams, and even bowls of soup in some way, belong to Thassa. And every tear that falls from a face is part of her domain as well. And you can't see those tears in the ocean, but the ocean collects them as the broken pact returns to the moray for the rest of their adventures. And that is where we're going to call it a season. All right. Great episode, everybody. Who, boy, howdy. That (laughs) was awesome. We did it. We did it. We won. Giant dragon. Hello. Brass dragon was nice. Brass yeah, dragon. Uh, I, I mean, I, I couldn't not do it at least once. You gave me a god weapon. I had the god weapon. <laughs> it was either going to be that or dominate monster monstrosity or whatever on Finn, but I decided that 
I didn't want to risk a saving throw. I wanted to, I wanted whatever. I, that, by the way, yeah, Jordan, when I asked you what your help was, if Astroc was looking rough, I was going to do something to you, but because you were still pretty strong, I was like, all right, I'll, get, I'll let him do what he wants to do. Astroc has a lot of hit points. Yeah, I know. He has a lot of hit points. And but you also took to a hit. lot of hits. I did. Yeah. I took you have a lot of hit hits. points, but they were slowly being erased as we were going <laughs> yeah. along. True. And that's yeah. why I was like, is he also, doing okay? It, that it was... strength drain would have also dealt you damage and reduced your hit points and lowered your strength number by a D4. Yeah, that would have been bad. You. That would have been bad. Yeah. But it good. didn't hit. But it didn't hit. So that's you didn't like have my to whole worry thing. about it. <laughs> That episode was amazing. Thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Um, tell the folks where they can find you. Hi, everybody. My name is Jordan Pigeon. You can find me on Twitter at Jordan Pigeon. And um, also, uh, we, well, we, we, we finished putting them out last week, but check out the, uh, the, tra- the commercials for Strixhaven that uh, I wrote and uh, Ashlyn produced and the command zone put out on the uh I, I guess they're on the command cast twitter right now because i'm very proud of those and they were uh, <laughs> yeah. pretty fun they are great yeah this, this hair made an appearance yes yeah <laughs> right <laughs> hey everybody i'm riley silverman you can find me on twitter at riley j silverman and instagram at riley silverman uh a week from tonight i am gming one of the shows on jasper's game week uh so please check i think this i think the seats have been auctioned off at this point but you can check that out there uh and also a week from friday uh we are starting at ripley improv a brand new show that i'm extremely excited about called slay we announced it last week and it is an improvised theater production that really takes advantage of the way that zoom works so it's gonna be really exciting to watch the streaming show but it is all about monster hunters and i am playing a a monster hunter by the name of jennifer barkas uh whose involvement with the department she's working for may or may not be voluntary so uh check out that show it'll be friday nights on twitch tv slash ripley improv every friday 6 p.m pacific time if you're a fan of buffy if you're a fan of any sort of like like gothic horror kind of stuff it is right up your alley and we have done so much cool research into how to create monsters that are culturally not like just like playing on like racial stereotypes and stuff like that and like we've like really dug our we've done a lot of research into how monsters are created in cultures and try to like create our own monsters and like what what is a monster to a group and like what is it that we're scared of that we create and so we've had some really fun thoughts with that so i'm looking forward to seeing how it goes so check that out and uh, terry gamble from this channel is also going to be in there so it's nice a good mix. That's, awesome. that's really cool it's really cool Um, Hi, I'm Danielle Radford. You can find me on Twitter at Danielle Radford, at Instagram at Danielle underscore Radford. And I'm one of the writers in the Honest Trailers. So if you want to check those out, those come out every Tuesday. We also do Honest Trailer commentary where we talk about uh, and and kind of go along with the trailers. You can get some of our thoughts. um, And that happens. uh, uh, Just come on my Twitter. I'll like link it and all that good stuff. Hi. Hey everyone, I'm Ashlyn Rose. You can find me on Instagram as RAR, it's Ashlyn, where I do a lot of my voiceover voices sometimes and a lot of snail videos right now. It's just a lot, a lot of snail videos and it's great. Uh, You can also find me on Instagram, I just said Instagram. You can find me on Twitter, at Ashlyn Rose. And if you ever wanna hear my actual voiceover, you can go to my website at ashlynrose.com. And it's not out yet, but I do have an animation. I am part of a children's animation. It's a YouTube series. I can't say what it is yet because I'm on NDA. So that's about as much as you're going to get. But if you're following me on Twitter, Mm. I will get to announce it soon. It's coming out next month. And I'm really excited to get to share it with you. So, yeah. Nice. Uh, Hi, everybody. I am the Internet's Ruben Bressler. You can follow me everywhere at MoxRuby, M-O-X-R-E-U-B-Y. Um, I will be appearing on an upcoming episode of Dragon Talk, uh, the Dungeons and Dragons official podcast, um, where we will certainly be talking about this season uh, and probably about this finale, because this was probably my favorite uh, session of this season. This is my f- and probably my favorite session of any str- uh, Zoom D&D that I've uh-huh. ever done. Um yeah, this was this was a ton of fun. And I just want to thank you guys for joining me on this journey. Uh, I want to thank you at home for joining us on this journey, uh, watching on Twitch or YouTube or listening to us on our podcast networks. 
Um, please do subscribe to all things Saving Throw Show. Visit the Patreon and support the channel. Um, we really, really appreciate uh, all of the support uh, that you give to us. If anyone wants to say anything else, now is the time. Otherwise... I, I just want to thank all everyone at this table for playing games. Yeah. It's been great. It's been really fun. Yeah. Uh, I fun. appreciate this this story we've told together and stories we told together in the past and hopefully will in the future. So couldn't agree more. And with that, we'll see you next time on the Broken Pact. Good night, everybody. Bye.